Hi everyone, this is Pasha. In this video, I want to build a dashboard in Looker Studio platform for my Google Ads account. I'm going to show you step by step how to create a Looker Studio dashboard or Looker Studio report to keep track of performance of your Google Ads campaigns. Let's start. The first thing I'm going to log in into my Looker Studio account. I just search uh, for Looker Studio on Google to get into my account. Looker Studio is a product of Google. It's a report builder or dashboard builder, which previously was known as Data Studio. Google later changed its name to Looker Studio. It's a free platform, so very useful. And the good thing about that is that because it's a product of Google, it's very easy to connect it to Google Ads or even to Google Analytics to keep track of the, your organic results, the organic performance of your website. To build uh, my dashboard, I cl uh, click on this blank report option to create something from scratch. The first thing that Google is going to ask me is to select my data source. I have a lot of options. I, For example, I can connect it to my Google Analytics or Google Ads, or if you have data in a spreadsheet, you can connect it to Google Sheets or even upload a CSV file and a lot of other options that you have here. Because we are going to build a dashboard for Google Ads, I will select Google Ads option. Here are uh, the list of my Google Ads accounts. I select the one that I want to build a report for and press add. All right, this is our blank report. We are ready to start working on our dashboard. After you create your dashboard, Google by default uh, adds the table for you automatically. I'm going to delete, delete that. I select a table and press delete on my keyboard. And the first thing that I want to do for my campaigns, I usually segment my campaigns based on brand and non-brand or other campaign groups, other campaign segments, depending on the account that I'm managing. So I'm going to uh, split the performance for brand and non-brand and others. So at first, hmm, uh, at, from the top menu, menu, I'm selecting insert. I'm looking for text, text option. Okay, I'm going to create my text here. I will name it uh, based on my segments. For example, this one, I will name it as uh, generic. Generic are the campaigns, uh, some of my campaign groups. And uh, after I create my text, I select that. And on the right menu, a window opens for text properties. I'm actually going to hide my picture here so you can see everything easier. Okay, now it's better. So I'm going to uh, adjust my text a little. And I'm going to make the size bigger to 24, make it bold. Okay, now it's better. Now I want to add the metrics, the most important metrics for my campaigns as a scorecard. Show each metric as a scorecard, for example, cost, clicks, uh, CPC, and other metrics. I'll go to the top menu, insert. I'm looking for a scorecard. Here it is. I put my scorecard here. So by default, Google selected clicks, the clicks metrics as my 
scorecard i want it to be uh, my cost actually the span for my campaign for my generic campaigns so i select clicks press look for cost okay mm. As I said, I want it to be for my generic campaigns only and the campaigns that uh, are not brand. Uh, it can be different for you. You might have different kind of campaigns or you might have one campaign. Uh, you might group them in different ways. So you can, uh, based on your campaign groups, change your filters here. And uh, this cost is the cost for my total campaign uh, campaigns more for my all campaigns but I want to filter it based on generics so I need to create a filter I selected cost here I go down and this option filter a scorecard filter add filter I'm going to name my filter as generic include campaign name is campaign actually not campaign name and uh, select a condition contains the word generic so if my campaign names uh, contain this word generic or any other word that you use in your uh, campaign structure this is a filter will just show data for those campaigns containing this term I save my filter as you see the cost for my generic reduced now it doesn't show the total cost of my all uh, campaigns just shows the cost for the campaigns that have the term generic in the campaign name Okay, good. Uh, I'm going to add another scorecard. Mm, this one, I change it to impression. And new scorecard. Actually, uh, I can copy this scorecard, Control C and control v to uh, duplicate my scorecard and just change the metric here this time to clicks hmm. and new scorecard Now I want to show my click to rate. I have an option here for click through rate or CTR. I can select it, but I strongly suggest you don't uh, don't select the default cost calculated fields. As you know, click through rate is a calculated field. It's calculated based on the clicks divided into impression and it's not a metric by itself it's calculated based on two other metrics so even to even though the google has google had ads has a default metric for ctr click to rate i would prefer not to use the default one because uh, it might not work correctly uh, in total or when I use filters, I want to add some filters to my dashboard later. So this one uh, won't work. To fix this, for calculated fields, I would cre um, create my calculated fields myself. I will create my own custom columns, custom fields. To create a new ca calculated field, here on the right section, data, you have all the uh, metrics of your Google Ads here on the bottom there is an option it says add a field so I'm going to select this to cre create my own calculated field 
Here, this window opens, I will name it CTR and put an underscore at the end so I know that this is a calculated field, I don't mistake it with the uh, default CTR column later. Here my formula. The formula for CTR is clicks and divided into impressions. It's good, I save it, but uh, I can press done or I can select this option, all fields. I will select this one. It goes to the window that I have all the fields. I select for the CTR color field that I just created, this one that has FX function, CTR underscore. Here I can show the default type of my calculated field. It is number by default. I'm going to change it to percent because click-through rate is a percent uh, metric. Good. Now I press done. So here, uh, forget about the default CTR. I select uh, the one that I created myself. The one that has underscore. They are the same here, uh, but later because I want to add some filters, uh, the Calculated field that I created myself will work better, will work correctly actually. Hmm. Let me make them a little closer together. Okay, looks better. I believe I can change that to change the header to CTR underscore. That underscore is not very beautiful. I select on this edit button. I put a name for my metric. I can write CTR or click through rate. Oops. No, it's not click. Click through rate. Now, finally. And the type is percent. Even if you hadn't changed the uh, default type of number, you, you can still change the change it to percent here. Okay, I'm going to add a conversion. Conversion is a, not a calculated field, so I can use the uh, default metric by Google. I create add a new. score card and change it to conversions. Hmm. Then I need a conversion rate and I also want to add cost per click CPC, both conversion rate and CPC and are calculated field. So again, I will go and create my own calculated fields, add a field. First, let's create CPC, cost clicks. I go to all fields here, add a field, adding a second field for conversion rate. Clicks divided into conversions. I'm going back to all fields to change the default type of my calculated fields. CVR should be percent. Hmm, I forgot to put a underscore for CPC. So I search for CPC. This FX function is my calculated field. Let me add a, an underscore to the field name. Uh, so I can differentiate it between that and the default metrics update. Back to all fields. 
again search for underscore CPC must be currency I will change it to USD US dollars I can add other metrics like CPA or any other calculated metrics that I need but for now these are enough for me I select done Hmm, let's duplicate one of my scorecards. Change this one to CPC. Change the name to CPC so the remove the underscore gets removed. Add another scorecard. this one for conversion rate Hmm, I must have done something wrong about my conversion rate because it doesn't show the correct value Uh, I think uh, I wrote the formula in reverse. Let's go and edit that. I click on add a field, go to all fields, conversion rate. Yeah, let's change it to conversions to clicks. Yeah, because conversion is smaller, it should come first. Now it should show correctly. It's loading yeah this number makes sense one thing that I forgot is that I didn't add the generic filter to this metrics I'm not sure if I can add them at the same time let's try no I cannot I need to add the filter one by one let's do it uh, the uh, filter that I created is already there I select that as you see my numbers are becoming smaller because now they are just showing the numbers the data for the generic campaigns only not for all campaigns in my account Good. Mm, now I want to change the color of these numbers. I am selecting all of them together. And, the, and this menu on the right, I go to the style. Here I can change the color on the labels, font color. Let's select blue. Okay, now it's better. One more thing that I want to do is to add a comparison to the either previous months or previous year. I select them all together again. Uh, and here on the right, comparison date range. Uh, by default, it is none, there is no comparison. I'm going to select it. You can either select to the previous period uh, previous year or other options i select the previous year and to be honest i'm not even sure what date date range these data are for i assume there must be by default by last month but to make sure let's add a date control date range control here on the top menu, add the control, date range control. My date range, okay, by default, I select it to be as last month. So 
this is data for last month and the comparison these percentages that show whether increased in green or decreased in red are for comparing this data April 1st to 30, 2023 comparing to the last year April 1st to April 30, 2022 hmm. Hmm. Now I want to do the same but for my brand campaigns I don't believe that I have any brand campaign in this account but I'm going to add them anyway just to show you how it looks like oops control Z I'm selecting all my data control C control V Uh, it doesn't work. It works but a little slow actually. So let's copy one by one. Okay, uh, I change this to brand. Try it once more, once again. Okay, paste. Okay, Oops, just two of them got copied. Selecting all my metrics once again. Sometimes Looker Studio becomes a slow, especially if you use too many uh, data sources. So it sometimes becomes irritating. Control C, Control V. Okay. Uh, I want to change this data to brand campaigns. I don't have any brand campaign, but still I going to remove the previous filter generic and add a new filter, um, call it brand. Include campaign name, campaign, contains, brand if any campaign contains the word brand it shows zero because i don't have any campaign for brand but i usually have it in depending on the account for the other ones i'm going to change my metric and my filter too from generic to brand all of them are will be zero i just want them to look good Alright, mm, I must have some other uh, campaign mm, campaigns in this account. The naming conversion in this account is not really very good. It's something that I need to uh, work on later. But for now, I just create another segment and name it. Oops. Control Z. Hmm. My, I press Ctrl Z too many times. The filter for this one changed again. I go to setup and the filter to brand. Uh, I put them a little to the top. Mm, that looks better now. Control C, Control V. Uh, this time I name it as others. Any campaign that is not either generic or brand, I change the filter to a new filter. I remove brand, add the filter. 
create a filter exclude campaign any campaign that doesn't contain the word generic or doesn't contain the word brand Hmm, I have $150 spending on some other campaigns. They are neither generic or brand. They are actually generic, but uh, not very good naming convention has caused this problem for me. So that's why I always suggest having a good naming convention for your campaigns. Oh, I didn't name this one. Campaign filter. And I will change the name of the filter to others. I'm now changing the filters for all of them to others. It looks better now. Mm, now I want to add a line chart here below this metrics. Now, uh, first my page, I need to make the size bigger. I go to page, current page settings, style, to the height, I change it to 1800. Okay, now my page is bigger, better. One more thing that I can do is add all of this to the bottom of these rows, to bottom of these segments as total, having a, me a metric for my total campaign is not segmented. But I'm not doing that for now. Now let's create a line chart. In there, uh, I'm looking for line chart. It's called time series chart. Time series chart, I add it here. Mm, dimension day, that sounds good. Uh, for the metrics, I want to have cost and clicks because I usually use conversions or CPA, but because I don't have many conversion data in this account, so it won't look good. So I just want to show cost and clicks. Now let's customize our time series chart a little. I go to style. The first one, the first metric, which is cost, I want to show it as a bar chart. It changed to bar, axis on the left, which is okay. And show data labels. No, I don't want to. Show axis title, yes. The second one, series two, I want to show it as a line, my clicks uh, on the right axis. Looks better. Show axis title. Okay, this looks better. Showing both my costs on the left axis and clicks on the right axis on the days of every day of my date range which is by default last month we changed uh, let's change it to last month again apply okay and 
and this, this gives me gives me an overview of the performance uh, during the month, the trend that it is following. As I said, click might not be very important. Usually, conversion is in, more important to me, but uh, because of not many conversion data that I have in the past months, only once one conversion, I'm uh, deciding clicks so that my chart looks better. Now I want to add a table to show the actual campaigns one by one. The metrics, I don't want to use day, I want to use my campaign as dimension for my metrics, cost, impression, clicks, click to rate. Conversions and CPC as the last metric that I will show in this table. You can always, depending on the things that metrics that you need on your campaign, you can change these columns. Now, let's make it a little more beautiful. Mm. First, uh, I have some campaigns that they don't have any spend in the last month, so I'm going to to add a filter, create a filter, only show uh, campaigns that have cost uh, more than $1. I select cost as my field, equal, uh, greater than uh, one, save. Okay, this looks better because I don't want to see the campaigns that uh, were not spending last month, were paused, actually. Uh, let's go to a style to make it a little more beautiful. Table colors, header background color, I don't like gray. Let's select mm, blue. And for header text, header font color, I select white. Row numbers, I do not need that. Making the size better. Uh, I'm putting my data in the center of each Hmm, this CPC has underscore, I don't want it underscore, so let's go to setup. For CPC, I will change it to CPC only without underscore. The same for click through rate. Ah, yeah, looks better. I can sort my data based on campaign name or cost, currently based on cost and I'm fine with it. Let it stay sorted based on cost descending. You can change your sort based on conversions or campaign name or 
other metrics that you want to. One thing that I forgot here, I don't think that I can do it right now, but at the beginning, before creating all these scorecards, it would be probably more beautiful to add a rectangle, something like this, change your rectangle background to white, uh, border to black, and after that, you put your uh, scorecards and your text inside that rectangle. It will give you a border to your data. Like right now, it looks a little scatter. I think if I copy them right now to this uh, rectangle, they will be uh, behind that. I cannot bring them forward. So uh, I should have done this, this from the very beginning because I don't want to uh, spend time to build all those scorecards again. But this is a good thing to remember for you to do it next time. Mm, bringing this a little up. This dashboard will be actually very useful, especially if you have more data, uh, because it's easy. You can just look into your dashboard, different data range and date range, and just you select, you see the metrics at a glance. You don't need to scroll in Google ads all the time, especially that Google ads might not be that user friendly. Another thing that I can do is if some filters here on the top might not be very useful for this account because it's very small, but for bigger accounts, it will be certainly useful. So you can filter your data. Uh, let's uh, add a drop down to show you how add a control, a drop down list. Here I would like uh, to, for example, filter my data based on generic brand or other. Uh, I need to create a new field for that for my drop down. Let's do that. Add a field. I call it campaign segment. I need, need to use a regex function. Case. when regex uh, regex match extract replace contain i will select match regex match campaign i'm telling my function when my campaign inc uh, includes the word generic or any other work that you want i put a star generic a star so it means that anywhere in my campaign name I have this word generic and then show it as generic in my filter, in my drop down. And when let's copy this one from the top, my campaign includes for example let's say brand or let's call it search because my campaign name was actually new campaign search something like that show it as search uh, and I need to add a end and my function Okay, this green check mark means that there is nothing wrong with my function. It should work. Uh, to check it again, a star, generic, a star, then generic, let's check. So I'm saving it, done. Uh, now I should have a new field as campaign segment. I'm trying to select that. A little slow. Hmm. 
Hmm, finally, campaign. Uh, what was the name? Campaign segment. Let's see if it works. So, no, it's not. See details. I should have done something wrong. Let's check my function again. Add a field. I'm looking for my segment function. Campaign segment. Let's see what I missed in this function case when regex match campaign field contains generic. Hmm, I think I should add a period a dot at the beginning and at the end. Let's try this. Yes. I expect this to fix my function. I added a period at the beginning and at the end. Update. Yes, it works fine now. And now I should have two, two options. Generic and mm, the other one is null. It should be search. Let's see new search campaign it shows that null probably i missed something in my function but anyway i'm sure you get the idea and here i can select for example i can show data only for my generic campaigns and this chart changes to everything in my page changes based on my filter here so if you have uh, you are managing a bigger account if you are you are more you have more campaigns this will be very handy you can add some filters more than one actually uh, one or two drop down here and filter your data so you can see data only for that segment for that filter This is my overall performance of my campaigns in the past months comparing to the previous year. What I would like to do is to add a new page. In my new page, I can add a table, let's say for my keywords. Adding a new table. And let's do something. Uh, go into the first page. Just copy my previous table because I already customized it and just change the dimension from campaign to keywords. This is easier, yeah. So I don't need to change every setting from the beginning. Okay, my keywords. Uh, I'm going to make this bigger because I have 34 keywords. The, uh, this is a good uh, insight for the performance of my keywords to see how my keywords are doing to make my dashboard a little more beautiful uh, let's add a rectangle here at the top I'm going to change it to blue this is assuming that my brand color is blue but if, if you are doing it for a client or for your own business uh, I would suggest to do all this coloring based on your brand colors, your brand, your own branding. I'm going to add a text here, insert text campaign performance. Let's adjust it. The font color should be white, center, and make it a little bigger. Uh, 
Okay, this is better. Uh, taking a little top or two top. Okay, this looks better. Uh, you can also ch add your logo here. I'm going to add a logo for my dashboard. You can add it from here, insert, image, or I have it somewhere in my desktop. Uh, just drag it, the image here. Here it is. Make it a little smaller. I'm using Google's logo. You can use it. You can use your own brand's logo or your client's logo. And possibly add a text here to say what the dashboard is about. Now I'm going to add all of them. Copy to the second page too. You can do a lot of things with uh, Looker Studio. You just need to play around with it to find what works the best for you and what you need the most. Uh, for example, these decimal numbers, you can change them all to make them the a round number. And overall, this was a simple dashboard that we just created together. And I personally find these dashboards very useful, whether for Google Ads performance, paid performance, or uh, organic performance. Even if you are running any campaign on social uh, media, for example, on Facebook, you can upload your data to a spreadsheet and use that spreadsheet to create a dashboard for your, for your Facebook campaigns. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know, please, in the comments if you have any questions about how to build a dashboard in Looker Studio. Thank you.